Hello, I am Graciela Tonon. I work in two different universities in Argentina, Universidad Nacional de Lomas de Zamora and Universidad de Palermo. In the two universities, I direct the Research Center of Social Sciences. Uh, also, during two periods, I was the secretary of the Human Development and Capability Association, what it was an enormous pleasure for me. The capability approach is the topic that today I will share with you. Let's begin. Well, the capability approach is a conceptual framework generated in the decade of the 19th and that today is used by diverse authors, having extended by all the regions of the planet. If we talk about its origins, it is necessary that we remember Dr. Amartya Sen, Nobel Prize in Economics in 1998, and his famous book, Development as Freedom. Also, a pioneer in the subject is Dr. Master Nussbaum, who proposed a first list of human capabilities. Her book, Women and Human Development, the Capabilities Approach. But what is the capability approach? Well, it is a conceptual framework to evaluate and assess individual well-being, evaluate and assess social arrangements and institutions, and design policies and proposals. The capability approach provides tools to assess inequality among individuals, understand the development of social groups, analyze social issues, legal and institutional practices, and design and prescribe policies and norms. The capability approach operates on levels and a scheme of evaluation of individual achievements and social agreements, and as a criticism of other approaches to assess the quality of life and justice. What is capability? Well, it's the actual ability which allows individuals to accomplish valuable life functionings by reflecting alternative combinations of their performance. Being the performance, everything these persons manage to accomplish or become during their lives. It is further directly related to people's well-being and freedom, while exerting an indirect influence over economic production and the process of social change. It's referred to what people may really choose, and one can really choose a given functioning or achievement only if, having chosen it, one's choice is respected and executed, and the functioning or achievement is this warranted actuality. The capability approach provides a nuanced and interdisciplinary framework for evaluating the lives of individuals and the societies in which they live. Focus on exploring what people are actually able to do and what lives they are also able to live. Center on exploring the substantial freedoms and achievements of individuals and the internal and external conditions that allow them to develop. Well, let's see the core commitments of the capability approach. Capabilities and functionings, value pluralism, ethical individualisms, means and ends. Ingrid Roman said, we must ask what are people really able to do and what kind of person are they able to be? They speak about capabilities and function. In relation with ethical individualism, well, we must take each individual as an end in itself. Considering value pluralism, we must ensure the individuals the opportunity to flourish while protecting her or his freedom to choose how to do so. 
and considering means and ends, we must understand and distinguish the means for achieving development and justice from the end of development and justice. The functionings are the activities and states which make up an individual's life. Functionings are achieved states of being, for instance, being nourished, being healthy, being literate. Capabilities are the opportunities and substantial freedoms available for the individual required to achieve valuable functioning. For example, having access to adequate alimentation, adequate health care, adequate education. Value pluralism, we need to remember to acknowledging the variability in individual's value ends, respecting the individual space of freedom a normative recognition of the inherent diversity of human societies, of well-being, justice, and individual choices. So, we need to remember that we are not all the same, we do not aspire to achieve the same functionings, there is a plurality of roles to achieve development and justice, and we should be free to choose which functioning to achieve and how to do so. Means and ends. Well, first, people differ in their ability to convert means into valuable opportunity. This is to say capabilities or outcomes. This is to say functioning. There are vital ends that, that cannot be paired with material means. For example, self-respect, relationships, affiliation. And then we can speak about the conversion factors, the internal and external means which determine the degree to which a person can transform a resource into a functioning in different dimensions, personal, material, social, and their environment. If we speak about ethical individualism, we need to remember valuing each individual as an end in herself. Like Martha Nussman said, preserve liberties and opportunities for each and every person, taken one by one, respecting each of them as an end, rather than simply a nation or supporters of the ends of others. Acknowledgement that every individual life has ultimate value, ensuring the protection of the fundamental capabilities and functionings of the individual and understanding the variability in the development of capabilities and functionings across individuals. Please not to be mistaken with ontological individualism. Well, the point of departure of sense theoretical approach is the identification of freedom as the main object of development, while the objective of the economical social policy analysis lies in establishing the empirical connections that make the viewpoint of freedom current and conscient as the perspective that guides the development process. In this respect, the capability approach represents a theoretical proposition to assess namely life satisfaction, perception of social situations, design for public policies which affect economic development, social policies, and international development. But the capability approach also critiques another point of view. For example, Amartya stands concerned with the standard models of development, inequality, and distributed justice. This is the case of resourcism when evaluating social arrangements based on access to resources only, and utilitarianism, evaluation and prescription based on provision of the greatest good for the greatest number of people. The capability approach is not restricted solely to market measures of utility, such as income, it incorporates the use of non-monetary measures of utility, such as self-reported data on happiness or life satisfaction. Well, in the case of happiness, is evaluating social arrangement based on preference, satisfaction, and contentment. But let's see, particularly. 
in this graphic. The capability approach recognizes the role for happiness in human welfare and research, as what makes people happy can provide useful insights into their underlying values and priority. But let's remember this phrase of Sen. Happiness is not all that matters, but first of all, it does matter, yes? Well, Sen's theoretical proposal views people as Asians that bring about change. And in this respect, the author refers to the agency of the individual as a participant in economic, social, and political actions. This focus considers the relevance of the differences in the way people satisfy their needs and the fact that the same people may require different resources to achieve the development of the same freedoms. So Sen considers people as active agents in the old sense of the term agency and not as passive receivers. And these agents have capabilities centered on the fundamental freedom to live, having reasons to value and increase the real option from which they can choose. These agents have capabilities defined as the real abilities an individual has to attain valuable achievement in his or her life, reflecting alternative combination of functionings the person can achieve. Such functionings are a representation of the things a person values to intervene. Thus, in a society that relies on the capability approach for public policy making, it will be individuals the ones making decisions in connection with the development of capabilities. But also there are critics to the capability approach. Well, the capability approach has been criticized for being an approach only focused on the individual. Although it is an approach further directly related to people's well-being and freedom, it also exerts an indirect influence over economic production and the process of social change. And Sam remembers us. Nevertheless, Authors such as Francis Stewart have pointed out the importance of groups, acknowledging the fact that persons live in groups, families, communities, or neighborhoods. Moreover, the concept of collective capabilities has been conceived. In this regard, we refer to the work of Hybrid, who reflects upon capabilities and attempts to relate them to the social structures emphasizing the importance of communities in the expansion of capabilities. Later, Murphy also referred to this subject, be recalling that it was Sen himself who spoke about the concept, even though he did not develop it, alluding to a freedom which is only available to and exercises by individual human agents working together as a part of a group or collective. Yet the concept of collective capabilities is not a synonym of community capabilities, since collective capabilities may also be expanded in different types of organizations. In my personal case, in 2018, I edited a special issue dedicated to communities and capabilities in the Journal of Human Development and Capabilities, which is the official journal of the Human Development and Capability Association. I was founded by Sen himself. You can see it at this link. It contains articles by authors from different regions of the world that show the importance of using the capability approach when researching and or working with communities. Sen says that individual freedom can be considered as the center value in the assessment of any society and as integral product of social organization with far reaching implication for the assessment of social institutions and political decisions. For Sen, capabilities are directly related to people's well-being and freedom and are directly related with economic production and the process of social change. The author added that there is a difference between real income and the well-being freedom that is extracted from it. 
and he considers the peculiarity of each person, the environment, the social climate, the custom of the communities and the differences in family life. But what does it mean to use the capability approach as a theoretical frame? Well, it means committing in your research to abide four basic principles. Capabilities and functionings as the metrics of analysis, valuing each individual as an end, acknowledging value pluralism, and differentiating means and ends of development and justice. To begin our conclusion, first, the capability approach implies the core normative commitments when doing research on development and justice. And the theories about capabilities imply the variety of interpretations on what the capability approach can do how it should be implemented, and the ways in which it is applied to a specific research areas. Thank you very much. And here is my email in case you can write to me. Bye-bye.